SFUSD. That's the place to be. SFUSD. Bienvenidos at the Juan Ying. SFUSD. Everyone come and see. SFUSD. Join our family. Happy middle of the week, engineers. How are you today? Oh, wonderful. I'm having a great day. I'm really looking forward to being an engineer with all of you. Were any of you able to work on your puppets last night? Oh, goodness, so many of you were able to make them. How exciting. I'm glad you did because while I was working on mine last night, I was thinking about my shadow puppet box. You know, this one that I've been using? Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if the material that I had taped to it before was the best one. I mean, I love the way it looks, but being an engineer, I think it's important to test materials out and know for sure. So my question for today is, am I using the best material for my shadow box? And I have an idea for testing this out. I'm going to test different types of paper to determine which one is best for our shadow puppet show. What do you think of that, engineers? I knew you'd be interested. Before we test out some our different materials, I wanted to share some new words with you. These words are properties that we will see today. Are you ready to read them with me? Awesome, let's read the words and see what they mean. So here we have translucent, and that's when a material allows light, but not detailed shapes to pass through. Okay, kind of like what we were seeing with the shadows. And transparent, which is on a transparent material, oh, is when a material allows light to pass through so that the objects behind can be seen. Okay, so wonderful job reading those with me. Now, which of these two properties would be best for our shadow box? Do we only want light to pass through, like in a translucent material, or do we want to be able to see every single detail? like in a transparent material. That's right. A property we want our materials to have is to be translucent. We also want to make sure that our material gives a crisp shadow. Otherwise, it won't be seen. Well, engineers, I think we're ready to get started. I made a chart ahead of time, and I'm going to use it while I perform my test. I want a material that's going to give a crisp shadow and is, not, and is only translucent, not transparent. Let's read what materials and properties we're gonna check out today on my chart. So today we'll be testing cardboard, printer paper, wax paper, cellophane, and toilet paper. And we'll be looking for translucent properties and a crisp shadow. I'm going to be using tape to change the materials out for each test, and I'm going to test and observe each material to see if it has both of the properties that I chose. Are you ready to test out cardboard with me? Great, let's see what happens. I'm gonna turn on my light source. Interesting, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that. It's not, not translucent, no crisp shadow. So let's test out the printer paper. All right, oh, also translucent and crisp, okay. Wax papers, yes, yes. Not bad, all right? This has some good properties. Let's test out the cellophane next. All right, engineers, do you think this cellophane is transparent? I agree, we can see all the details and not really any shadows. So, translucent, no. Crisp shadow, no. Oh wait, it is translucent because the light still comes through. I'm sorry, I made a mistake, scientists. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's test out our final material, toilet paper. Hmm. Oh, this one's pretty translucent. And it has a crisp shadow. Yes and yes. Hmm, but what do you think? Will it actually be useful for our shadow box? Yeah, I'm not really so sure either. But which materials 
do have the best properties for our box. I agree, either the wax paper or the printer paper. I'm gonna continue using the wax paper. Boop. But it's good to know that I can use a different material if I needed to. I'm so excited, engineers. We are so much closer to making my shadow puppets work better. We already determined what materials I need to make them and what material is best for displaying the shadows. If you're making this with me, what are you going to use? Ooh, how exciting. I had so much fun learning with you today. I can't wait to learn even more with all of you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the show. Hi, everybody. My name is Maestra Luna Vasquez. Today, we are going to do a song about sound. Sound moves in wavelengths. Some of the waves are big and slow, and other wavelengths go really quickly by. They're also known as frequencies. And according to the material that you use to create an instrument, you will hear different sound frequencies. You're going to see how we can make instruments from the things we find at home. And don't forget to sing along. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, listen, listen, listen. Los sonidos varían según su frecuencia. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, listen, listen, listen. Different sounds around us according to their frequency. Oh yeah, listen. Now we are going to make some sound frequencies or wavelengths when we put water into glasses and then play them with a piece of silverware. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Listen, listen, listen. I'm going to put some kitchen items like beans and popcorn and grains into some plastic containers to make shakers. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Now I'm going to make an instrument with a box and some rubber bands. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Listen, listen, listen. You can also make music with your mouth, but you're not singing. Try this. You can always make music with your body. You have it with you everywhere you go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Listen, listen, listen. I hope you learned how sound can be made by many things in our world around us. You can make instruments from things you find at home. Let's make some wavelengths. Woo, 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 woo. Hello friends and happy Women's History Month. My name is Miss Carla Diaz and I'm so happy to be with here today. In honor of Women's History Month, where we honor all the wonderful contributions women have made in our society, I'll be reading a book about Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson was an American poet who used her words and imagination to write beautiful poems. I'll be reading On Wings of Words, The Extraordinary Life of Emily Dickinson by Jennifer Byrne, illustrated by Becca Standler with permission of Chronicle Books. 
Soft moonlit snow draped the Dickinson house in white. It reaches to the fence, it wraps it rail by rail. It's lost in fleeces, it flings a crystal veil. In a little room in a dark before dawn, a baby girl was born. Her parents celebrated the holiday they called Emily. Emily met the world and began to explore. To little Emily, every bird, every flower, every bee or breeze, slant of light seemed to speak to her. She explored with her eyes, her ears, her thoughts, and found words for everything she was discovering. The bee is not afraid of me. I know the butterfly. The brooks laugh louder when I come. When, it, when thunder crashed and lightning flashed, Emily got scared and called it the fire. Emily adored her older brother, Austin. She said there was always such a hurrah wherever he was. She loved her school friends, who she said were, a warmth as near if the sun were shining on your hand. Every day, Emily's life rippled with new joys and swayed with new feelings. It was clear Emily was becoming a person in many ways like other people, only more so. Her happies were happy, her sads were sadder, her thoughts were deeper, her desires were stronger. And oh, there was so much that Emily loved. My heart grows light so fast that I could mount a grasshopper and gallop around the world and not fatigue him any. Most of all, Emily loved her books, the strongest of friends of the soul books. To Emily, every book was an adventure, a distant journey on a sea of words, and if a book was forbidden, well, that didn't stop Emily. Like books she had wanted that Austin smuggled into the house and hid inside a piano, Emily rushed it up into her room and read it in delicious secrecy. Every story she read at night by candlelight or in the garden's midday sun was a new passion, a ray of light. But there were shadows too. In the 1800s, sorrow was a daily companion. The sorrow of diseases incurable, accidents untreatable, and deaths too soon, too close. All of this frightened Emily and flooded her mind with questions. Emily tried to find answers at home. She looked for answers at church. She searched for answers at school. But everywhere she looked, she was to obey without asking, to believe without knowing why. So she began to put her own faith in stuff that she understood. In the name of the bee and of the butterfly and of the breeze. Amen. When her very religious school principal separated the class into hopers and no hopers, Emily was put into the group without hope. Yet Emily did have hope. She had her own kind. Hope is a thing without feathers that perches to the soul and sings the tune without words and never stops at all. So with hope, she sought her truth. I am out with lanterns looking for myself. Then like rays of sun breaking through the clouds, her thoughts and feelings started to come to her own as words, new words, her own words. The robins, the bumblebees, the daisies she loved, the dark diseases and frightening deaths, the unknowable God and mysterious heaven all came pouring out as poems. Things are budding and springing and singing. Answers she couldn't find in other people, she started to find in herself. I have been dreaming, dreaming a golden dream with eyes all while open. Her poem soothed her sadness, gave her strength, set her free. With the power of her words and the freedom of her imagination, she tasted spices in foreign lands and hid inside a flower. She learned against, she leaned against the sun, dwelt in a house of possibilities, and rode a carriage to the ends of time. She became a bird, a worm, a ghost, a god, a beggar, a king, somebody, a nobody. I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? 
Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell. They'll banish us, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public, like a frog. To tell your name, the live long June. I'm an admiring fog. She called her poems my letter to the world that never wrote to me. And so with her words, her mind, Emily dove into the darkness, the darkest depths of the sea and of sadness. She rose up to the glowing heights of the sun and of joy. Emily saw the inner world was bigger than all of the world outside. The brain is wider than the sky, for put them side by side, the one on the other will contain with ease and you beside. Emily spent more and more time in her room writing, creating. She ventured out less and less, exhilaration within. As Emily's inner world grew bigger, her outer world grew smaller. Yes, there were things she still loved in the worldly world. She loved her gardens, the bees, the springtime, and the wind combing its fingers through the trees. And of course, her family. A few very special friends, her big dog, Carlo, and the children. Emily always loved children but most people she saw rarely, or not at all. Emily began to dress in white, white like the clouds, like foam on a wave, white like a cocoon in her own room from which butterflies were born, butterflies that were poems that flew with Emily on wings of words. People in the town said Emily was weird, Emily was strange, but Emily didn't care what they said of her. Her world was somewhere else. My country is truth. Emily never stopped writing, never stopped exploring. With every day and every poem, she saw more and discovered more, traveled deeper, soared higher for the rest of her life. On a Saturday in May in 1886, Emily died, slipping into the eternity she had wondered about and written about all of her life. Then something wonderful and amazing happened. Emily's sister, Vinny, opened drawers, trunks, boxes, and closets and found hundreds of hundreds of Emily's poems, more than anyone had ever imagined. Poems that, on the wings of Emily's words, flew out and away into the future and around the world. Today, most every library, every bookstore, every school, and every city, state, and country has Emily's poems, Emily's words, Emily's letters to each of us. The world is sleeping. We must be crowing cocks and singing larks and, to, and a rising sun to awaken her. And in those words, you can hear Emily's voice echoing through the years, speaking to you, to all of us who are brave enough to take in pen in hand, to look deep and to write what we discovered. I dwell in possibility a fairer house than prose, more numerous of windows, superior for doors. Of visitors, the fairest for occupation this, the spreading wide, my narrow hands to gather paradise. Hey everybody and welcome to another lesson of San Francisco Loves Physical Education. My name is Mr. Kelder. During many of your SF Loves Learning lessons this week, you've been comparing different materials. Today, we're going to do a Tabata that'll help us compare upper body exercises with lower body exercises. When we do upper body exercises, we'll work to strengthen our arms, our shoulders, and our chest. When we do lower body exercises, we'll work to strengthen our legs, including our calves. Two important muscles in our legs are our hamstrings and our quadriceps. In case you forgot, a Tabata is a high intensity workout that helps us get healthy in a short amount of time. Today, our Tabata will include seven different activities and each activity will last 30 seconds. As we do our Tabata, pay special attention to how some exercises are working the upper body and some are working the lower body. The first Tabata activity we're going to do is called the high plank. I'm going to use my watch to help time us. Make sure you find a really safe space to do this activity. I've got a safe space 
I hope you're in your safe space. We'll start in three seconds with our high plank. Three, two, one, and go. I get in my high plank position with my hands beneath my shoulders, my knees off the ground, and I just hold myself like this. Oh, and I can feel my shoulders getting stronger, my arms getting stronger, Five and my chest getting stronger. Okay. And Recover for rest. Then I rest for 10 seconds and I switch to a lower body activity. This is called squats. I have my feet beneath my shoulders and I sit in an imaginary chair and I slowly rise up. And I sit in my imaginary chair and I slowly rise up. This is getting my leg muscles stronger, including my hamstrings and my quadriceps. And I come back up, I'll do one more. Crouch down, come back up. The third activity is called flat tires. I love flat tires. A flat tire is like a push-up where you rest on the ground. I get in my high plank, my elbows bend, I rest on the ground, and then I push myself back up and I slowly lower myself down. I rest on the ground and I push myself back up and I lower myself down. I Five rest seconds. on the ground and I push myself back up. One more, I go down I rest, and I push myself back up. The fourth activity is called lunges. Two lunges, I have my feet beneath my shoulders. I'm gonna step forward, I'm gonna drop my back knee close to the ground, then I'm gonna alternate and I keep switching my feet as I step forward. This is called a lunge. I drop down and I come back. Step forward, drop down, Five come seconds. back. Step forward, I drop down, come back. I step Recover forward, for drop down, come back. The fifth activity we're gonna do Five is called seconds. shoulder touches. To do shoulder touches, I'm gonna get into my high plank and I'm gonna go touch my opposite shoulder and I'm sort of balancing on one arm as I do this. Oh boy, I can feel my upper body getting a workout as I do shoulder touches. Okay, okay, okay. And then I rest and I have another lower body activity. This is called calf raises. To do calf raises, I stand with my feet, bring my shoulders, I go on my tippy toes and I come back down. Tippy toes, come back down. This is working my calf muscles, which are right below the back of my knee. And I go on my tippy toes, come back down. My legs are getting a workout. These are called calf raises. And the last activity is called plank Five jacks. Seconds. To do plank jacks, I get into my high plank and I jump Work my feet apart. My feet go apart, my feet go together. My feet go apart, my feet go together. These are called plank jacks. And my upper body is getting stronger, including my shoulders, my triceps, and my chest muscles. Okay, okay, oh boy. Recover for 10 seconds. And then I rest for 10 seconds. Oh boy. And I feel stronger. I hope that you can notice your upper body, including your arms, your shoulders, and your chest and your lower body, including your legs and probably your calf muscles. They're a little bit tired and maybe a little bit sore. That's because you're making your whole body stronger when you do upper body and lower body exercises. Oh boy, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for getting healthy with me and take care everybody, bye. There's a whole new day that's still ahead so shine on. Hi buddies, it's Teacher Maggie and this is Anj. And today we are going to take a little mindful moment at the beach. So come on over with us. First you're going to stretch your legs out in front of you. And I should just tell you that the beach is one of my favorite places to be. So I'm so happy to be here with you today. And the first thing we're gonna do is get really grounded. So we're gonna get all this sand and I want you to cover up your legs with sand. So cover up your feet and scoop the sand and cover up your legs. You can remember the smell of the beach. Oh, I love that. 
and then cover your knees with sand and cover your thighs and you're gonna really pat it in and cover your feet all up, your legs, you can't even see your legs. And it kind of feels really good when you get covered in sand, you're really connected to the ground beneath you. Okay, good. So you're all covered in. So now we're gonna take a moment and just a little pause and we're gonna think about, I'm just gonna wait for the phone call to end. So now that we're all covered up with sand, let's keep our legs really still so we don't move any of the sand. And we'll imagine we're sitting on the beach and we're just watching the ocean in front of us. So we're gonna picture the waves coming in and the waves going out. And we call this our wave breath. So first we're gonna start with our finger. You got it, Audrey. So we're gonna use our finger and you're gonna trace like a wave going up and then the wave goes out. And again, the wave comes up and the wave goes out. And as you draw the wave with your finger, let's see if we can breathe with it at the same time, okay? So we breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more big breath in. Breathe out. Feels kind of good, huh? Sometimes just taking those deep breaths can really help you to feel calm and get you focused and ready to do something else. Now let's take our hands back. We're gonna shake all that sand off. So put your hands back behind you. Lift your hips up off the ground. You can even shake out your legs a little bit. Get all that sand off. Good job. Take a seat back down. You can brush it all off. And that is it. I hope you feel a little bit grounded, focused, and calm, and ready to go out and have a great day. Good job, buddies. Hello. I'm Superintendent Dr. Vincent Matthews of the San Francisco Unified School District. It made me so happy to spend time with you today. I hope you had fun too. What did you make on the show today? Submit your content here using the QR code or go to bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y backslash S-F-U-S-D yes, Y-E-S and watch all of our episodes at S-F-U-S-D dot edu backslash sf loves learning and now it's time to say goodbye so let's sing our goodbye song for this song you have to use your whole body will you sing it with me are you ready wave high wave low for now it's time to go wave your elbows wave your toes Wave your tongue and wave your nose. Wave your knees, wave your lips. Blow a kiss with your fingertips. Wave your ears, wave your hair. Wave your belly and wave your derriere. Wave your chin, wave your eye. For now it's time to say goodbye. Bye bye. SFUSD, that's the place to be. SFUSD, bienvenidos at the Juan Ying. SFUSD, everyone come and see. SFUSD.